Okay, so this is uh, the video that I was requested in class yesterday. Uh, the standard normal distribution uh, using the TI-80 series calculators. Now, I'm going to do this on a TI-83 because most of you who asked me about this have the older firmware on your 84. So the TI-83 has the same firmware as the older TI-84s have in terms of this particular uh, this particular application. Alright, so we have um, I have some problems here that we uh, did in class uh, or at least similar to the ones that we did in class using the tables. Alright, so what I want to do is go through the command uh, using the calculator. So there's two normal functions. So you go into second vars or second distribution and there's two normal distribution functions. Normal PDF and normal PDF is the probability density function. Normal CDF is the cumulative density function. It is the cumulative density function that gives us the same information as our normal distribution tables give us. Alright, so um, to do these calculations, same rules apply that I talked about in class yesterday. Alright, um, if we're looking for the probability that Z is less than a value, that was a value that you got directly off the table. So that was a value that you get directly from the cumulative density function. So I'm going to come down here, pull the cumulative density function in. Now the lower bound for this, remember this curve is infinite, the lower bound for this is negative infinity. And the way you put negative infinity in is you say negative 1, then you go second comma, second comma, there we go, to get that little e, not, not the exponential function, but a little capital E. All right, it's a double e on the screen here. All right, and then 99. Essentially what that does is it gives me um, 1 times 10 to the negative 99, which is effectively infinity for the limit of the calculator. All right, then we do comma, the upper bound. Now the upper bound here is my z value. So that is 0 0.92. And then I have to put in the mean and the standard deviation. Since we're dealing with the standard normal curve, the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1 and there we go. Alright now we're gonna round these to four decimal places because that's what the table rounds their probabilities to. Alright this way I know everybody's got the same information. Alright so if I'm looking for Z the probability that Z is less than a value it is simply the cumulative density function that you get from the calculator. Now, if I look at another problem here, where I'm interested in z being greater than a value. All right, remember, the cumulative density function gives us the less than side. All right, so I'm going to come over here and again go into, uh, what am I going into? There we go, vars, normal CDF. And again, what I have to calculate on the calculator is the probability that z is less than 2.23. All right, so I'm again going to go negative infinity, so negative 1, second comma, 99, that's negative infinity. Uh, my z value that I'm looking for, 2.23, and then the mean and standard deviation of the standard normal distribution. And when I do that, I get 0 0.9871. So 0 0.9871 is this side of the curve. To get the other side, I just have to remember that this is um, this is equal to, which I guess I forgot to put an equal to in there, didn't I? Uh, this The entire curve is equal to 1, so I do 1 minus the probability I just found, 
and I get 0 0.0129. Okay. So if I'm looking for the probability that z is larger than a number, I do my normal calculation, get the probability that z is less than that number, and then take 1 minus that probability. Okay. All right, so one more here, um, the between problem. All right, I've got z between negative 1.04 and 2.76. Now this is where all of you who have the ATI 80 series calculator have an advantage over those people using the table. When we did this class, when we did this problem in class, we had to do two calculations, right? We had to find uh, the table value table value for 1.04 and we had to find the table value for 2.76 and then we had to subtract those two. Alright, but because the calculator when you pull up your probability your cumulative density function on the calculator you're putting in a lower bound and an upper bound if you're doing a between problem on the calculator you can do it all in one step so this time instead of my lower bound being negative infinity my lower bound is negative 1.04 so negative 1.04 my upper bound is well my upper bound 2.76 and then my mean and standard deviation, 0, 1. And I get the answer all in one shot there, 0, 8, 4, 7, 9. Okay, um, I guess that's it. So you can use your calculators if you got them, and, uh, and that's the end.